She's been called the Queen of Green, and when you look at all that Deirdre Imus has accomplished at Hackensack University Medical Center, it's no wonder the moniker has stuck. I'm now joined by the one and only Deirdre Imus, president and founder of the Deirdre Imus Environmental Health Center. Deirdre, greening your life is a concept that's near and dear to your heart, and you've now brought it to the community through Hackensack University Medical Center. Tell me, what is the mission of the health center here at the hospital? The mission is to identify, control, and ultimately prevent environmental toxins or hazards that uh, affect our children's health uh, negatively. Um, so that really includes everything from cleaning products to how we build our homes, how we eat, how, what cars we drive, every material that's used in the building of a building, whether it's a hospital or an office building or a home. So all of those things start to add up if they're toxic, and many of those contain all those um, toxins that make our children sick. What are some of the common environmental toxins that we come into contact with on a daily basis? Most common would be a lot of the pesticides because they're in our air, our food, our water um, from agriculture, a lot of personal care products, beauty products, um, some cleaning products. And when you talk about cleaning products, you actually started a program called Greening the Cleaning. Yes. Tell me about that program. Well, the Greening the Cleaning program started in 2001, and that really came out of a whole vision here at the hospital. And the questions were, are cleaning products that are used in hospitals safe? Do they contribute or may they contribute to um, indoor air quality being worse? And all these, you know, are there a lot of chemicals that cause harm? And I found out the answer was yes. So. I asked the president at the time, um, John Ferguson, and Bob Garrett was here also, um, can, um, can we revamp the hospital? Wouldn't it be great, the whole vision of seeing a hospital that's completely non-toxic with their cleaning? And Bob Garrett, being the president now, sees that vision and how important it is to patient care because it directly impacts patients. And we successfully implemented on the entire campus in 2001, the spring of 2001, and that was really the, the whole genesis and beginning of the Deirdre Environmental Health Center. I'm here with Erin Ide, who is the research project manager here at the Deirdre Imus Environmental Health Center. Erin, tell me about some of the research that's going on here at the research center in the Deirdre Imus Environmental Health Center. Well, we have several studies. We started the research program about four years ago, and we do research in children's environmental health. So basically, we're looking at environmental toxins or environmental factors and the way that they could influence children's health. What are some of the key environmental fact factors or toxins that we know are linked to disease? Well, there are several that um, are linked to disease, um, such as um, air pollution, plasticizers, such as BPA. Those are, those are all the plastics that we read about not to give our kids. Exactly. BPA is an element found in the plastic. Yes, it's a common chemical in plastics. And it's sort of a myth, if you will, um, that BPA is the only harmful substance in plastics. And many parents don't know that. And they might go to the store and buy a BPA-free water bottle, for example, and think that it's okay. But really, um, what the latest research is finding um, is that some of the chemicals substituted for BPA may not be any safer. Okay, so what should we be looking for instead? Well, um, the safest thing is to use a stainless steel, steel water bottle or a stainless steel lunch container to pack your kids lunches in instead of using plastics. There's a lot of talk about metals these days, heavy metals and lead. Yes. What's the concern there? Well, the three most common that most people read about is um, mercury, lead, and arsenic. So mercury is found in a number of sources like coal burning uh, power plants and in fish. And so we see it in our food supply. Lead is, is another one. Any of us who live in a house that was built before 1978 when lead was outlawed in paint have that risk. Um, with especially when windows or doors are opened and closed and you get that fine particulate dust that you almost can't see. Let's talk about some other environmental factors that we need to be concerned about, especially in our home. Sure. Um, well, our home is almost like a bubble. They're very airtight and very energy efficient, which is very positive, but it also traps in a lot of toxins or, or different air pollutants that might be inside um, from common things like cleaning products and paints and varnishes. So it's really important to do a little bit of ventilation in, in the home. 
even just opening the windows for a couple minutes a day can really make a big difference. Okay, so Erin, what are we looking at here? Well, this is a map of 10 counties in northern New Jersey. And for the study, we looked at eight different contaminants that are possibly associated with um, neurological disorders and autism. So this map right here shows places where there is known lead contamination. Um, and this information is from the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. So this map shows almost 90,000 locations in the 10 counties that have detectable levels of lead. So children who are living in this area right here are much more susceptible to this kind of contamination and to possible neurological disorders. Well, the actual results of the study are still coming out and those results will be on our website and also they'll be with the CDC as well. Um, but certainly we can see that there's um, where the lead is and that's, that's the first part of putting together this puzzle. This is Dr. Lewis Tischold, who is the Vice Chairman of the Heart and Vascular Hospital here at Hackensack University Medical Center. One of the things that you're really focused on in your practice is integrative medicine. What does that mean for someone who doesn't know the term? Correct. Uh, integrative medicine is a term that's used today uh, for the combination of conventional care and complementary medicine techniques. Uh, one of the focuses of this piece and of the Deirdre Imus Environmental Health Center is to green your life. And when we talk about greening your life in terms of medicine and preventing illness as a whole, what are some ways that we can do that? I think we all live under stress and it's hard to change the stress. But I think it's very important how you respond to stress. And there are various techniques that we teach, so-called mind-body techniques, that can decrease the body's, the physiology of the stress, the bad things that stress cause. Like what? S such as yoga, such as Tai Chi, such as transcendental meditation. Transcendental meditation, what is that? Uh, this is an Indian uh, technique uh, of relaxation exercises, of a mantra, of, of breathing exercises. All of these techniques work with breathing exercises. So when you see a patient who's sick, do you take into account that person's environment as well? I, it's absolutely, you have to look at the physical environment and the emotional environment. But I think the things we have to try to do is keep the environment as clean and, and as good as possible. I think hospitals have a role in making sure not to pollute the environment. How important is that doctor-patient relationship, especially for a patient who may be interested in some complementary techniques? Um, how important is it that they find a, a physician or a healthcare practitioner who buys into their philosophy? Well, I think independent of complementary medicine techniques, it's very important to find physicians who are interested in what we call patient-centered care. Look at it in terms of also the patient's values and the patient's wishes. I think doctors who are willing to look at complementary medicine probably have a better outlook in terms of dealing with patients. A big part of what we do here at the center is we're a huge resource to teach everyone, whether you're a doctor or a mom or a student or whatever, to learn how to live healthier. But the immediate patient care is, is one of the most important things um, for this hospital is that the patients come first. You know, that's what everyone's here for, to take care of them in the healthiest way possible. And that's where I feel our mission is so great and how we serve the hospital here at Hackensack is helping to provide that healthiest physical healing environment.